photorealistic volumetrics in Blender are actually very easy to do, if you know what you want and you know what you are doing. And the best thing is, it's free and super quick to set up. But before we dive into the details, I cannot stress enough that volumetrics aren't going to save a bad scene. To prove to you that it really doesn't take much to make one, let's make one, very quickly. I created the mountain using the built-in ANT landscape add-on. The Slick Rock preset is my absolute favourite as it creates exactly the look I'm almost always going for. For the ground I used another preset but this time I chose large terrain because, well, I wanted a large terrain. Texturing landscapes is where, in my opinion, most people ruin their render right away because they are using procedural textures. That's great for games and if you really know what you're doing, that's fine, but in most cases I'm going for a different approach. And that is very quick and dirty. The internet is full of great pictures of all sorts of mountains and terrains. And when it comes to photorealism, nothing is going to be the real world. So as long as you don't introduce any crazy camera moves, which you shouldn't do anyway, you can totally get away with projecting an image onto your geometry and tweaking the UVs using proportional editing. I did the same for the ground using an aerial photo that was shot using a drone. To set the mood, I used a simple HDRI. Since we are going to use a lot of fog and haze later, the sky doesn't have to be perfect. Adding in a human silhouette to get a sense of scale really goes a long way. This particular one is a simple image I created in Midjourney. After adding a camera and adjusting the materials, we can finally talk about the reason you clicked on this video. Volumetrics. And there are three types that I use. Atmospheric haze, gradients and VDBs. Method one is the basic haze. To add simple fog or haze, most people including me use a simple cube. Create a new material, delete the principal piece DF shader and add a principal volume shader. The overall intensity is defined by the density and the emission. The key here is to use very small values like 0.001. To make it easier to control, I add a simple value node set to something like 0.001 and feed that into the math node set to multiply. Then I plug that into the emission strength and density slot. Now I can easily control the overall fog amount with one slider. To blend everything together, I plugged an RGB node into the color and emission color slot. Now I can sample a color from the sky, which instantly makes the whole thing more realistic. I usually use at least two of these cubes in my scenes. One overall haze and one in the distance to mimic the effect of atmospheric haze. If you look at reference photos, you often see that fog sort of piles up at the ground and fades away at the top. And for that, we are going to use ground fog. The easy approach to this would be to simply duplicate the cube and move it down. But instead, let's not. For smooth gradient, we'll add exactly that. A gradient node, controlled by a mapping node and a color ramp. Adjust the rotation and scale, and that's really all you need. Bonus tip, if you want your mountains to look really high, duplicate the ground fog and rotate it so that the peaks of the mountains are covered in fog. But to really sell the effect, we need to add one more layer of realism. And for that, we are going to use clouds. If you want to make your clouds in Blender, knock yourself out, but I'm going to use free VDBs. Jenga VFX has great and most importantly free packs you can get on their website. I recommend saving them to your asset browser because once you've used them, you are going to use them a lot. The material setup is almost identical to the one that I used for the basic haze. The only difference is that you need to plug in an attribute node into the emission color. Otherwise, you are going to light up the entire cloud. If you like using EV like me, make sure to uncheck custom range in the render settings. Otherwise, the volumes in the distance are not going to show up in the render. The fun thing about these clouds is that you cannot only use them as clouds, but also as ground fog or haze. This helps to break up that overly smooth look you're getting from the gradient node. Little bonus tip, if you want to add movement to these clouds, try mixing in a noise texture and animating the location in the mapping node. It's not perfect, but very performance friendly and gets the job done most of the time. So after adding a few meshes in the foreground, tweaking the mountains and clouds and finally animating the camera, I got this. Which isn't very exciting, so in the composite I added in some rain and snow, as well as some color grading and sound effects. And that's it.